rotation flip canvas. Oh, <laughs> let's soften the lips a bit, make them look more, you know the word. Juicy lips. Oh. What's up guys? So a while back, we did an art challenge where we couldn't use undo for one of our portrait drawings and a lot of haters in the comments were like, uh, you can still erase, it doesn't really count now, does it? You can still look it. So today to shut everybody up for good, we're gonna draw a portrait without undo, without liquify, and without eraser. Oh. I'm sure this will turn out well. So this will just be another video in a series of videos where I put myself through absolute torment. And I hope you guys enjoy watching me suffer. I'm suffering, so y'all don't have to. Now for this piece, I wanna focus on the expression, but when you can't erase, oh, I've already made a mistake. <laughs> I've used the wrong color and I cannot erase, I cannot undo. Okay, good. This is going well. You know what I will do though? I will delete this layer. That doesn't count. <laughs> Let's start again. So for this piece, I'm gonna run away from my background responsibilities and I'm gonna do it on a gray background. Now time for the sketch. See, the problem here is we're focusing on the facial expression and, oh, oh sh oops, I just undid something. Okay, I'm gonna take my hand away from the keyboard. I'm gonna draw like this. <laughs> so the problem here is we are drawing and focusing on the expression, but usually with expressions, I need to make a ton of different adjustments in order for it to look convincing. And today I can't do that. Okay, looking good so far. Image, rotation, flip horizontal. Oh, <laughs> not looking good. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> what did I do? Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the hardest part the facial features, this will be fun. Wow, it's crazy when you can't erase. It's gonna look like a jumbled mess. She has a unibrow right now. Oh no, bruh. <laughs> what? I think that's okay for the sketch because you know, since we can't erase and we can't adjust, the sketch is not gonna be perfect. And I think we'll probably end up painting over the sketch. It's not really gonna be a part of that final piece. And before you guys go into the comments, and try to tell me that this is what it's like to do traditional art. I grew up doing traditional art. You merely adopted traditional art. I was born in it. I personally moved to digital art for a better life, for more convenience, for more opportunities, for more ways to do things, for not having to clean up my paint, for having undo. Okay, so we're gonna start a new layer and since we're drawing our character Kara based on this reference, she's gonna, oh no. That's not the right color. She's gonna have white hair. So if you're curious about the use of reference here, I'm basically just referencing the lighting scenario and the expression here. Okay, so what do you guys think so far? Oh, it looks okay, yeah. <laughs> Aside from the sketch looking really bad, uh, I think overall it's all right. So we're gonna set a multiply layer and what multiply does is it allows you to paint over what's underneath and darken it. So it's almost like applying a shadow. And I think that's too dark. Let's turn down the opacity. What's crazy is when you are just so used to drawing digital, when your hand's just on the keyboard, it automatically goes to undo. It's like a muscle memory. This is why I think it's gonna be really hard to try to paint traditionally. I know a lot of you guys have been asking to see that, but to be honest with you guys, the only thing stopping me is the cleanup and setup process. It's just too much. Looking pretty good. I'm just gonna finish applying all of the lighting elements here so that I can avoid the facial features for a little bit longer because <laughs> I'm just telling you it's not gonna end well. All right, this is looking pretty good so far and I haven't misclicked undo too much. Now, for those of you guys watching, you can feel free to try this challenge out for yourself. Maybe follow along with me and endure the suffering with me so we can be in this together. <laughs> But now we're gonna get on to the facial features, I think. All right, check that out, guys. Eyebrows are looking pretty good. This might not even be a challenge for me after all, huh? Hmm? See if we can get this down in one go, and I have a feeling this is already kind of crooked. Rotation, flip canvas. Oh. Oh my God. You know what guys, maybe after this portrait is done, I should do a version where I do actually go back in and lookify it so you guys can see the difference that it makes. Cause right now I'm not super happy with the way this looks and I can't do anything about it. Switch the round brush. Let's get a dark color and let's go into the iris. Ooh. How's that, huh? That's, that's pretty good. Now I'm not gonna lie, I keep wanting to liquefy. That's the main hurdle right now. I'm okay without undo, I'm okay without the eraser, but I keep wanting to liquefy. So instead of doing that, I have to kind of manually push things back into place and kind of stretch them out with just like these extra brush strokes. And it's a lot of work. All right, now we're gonna go down to the nostrils and the mouth. Let's just keep this really, really simple, right? Because the fewer brush strokes you make, the fewer mistakes you make. Am I right? If you want to make no mistakes while you're drawing, just don't draw at all. <laughs> you can write that down. That's a quote from Sam. Okay, let's go on to the mouth. 
Ooh, what's going on? Something's gone horribly wrong with their mouth, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna take this layer and move it above the old line art so I can cover that up and kind of work on a clean slate here. Flip canvas. Not bad. This looking looking better. I'm gonna just merge the line art down and then merge this layer down. So everything's on one layer. Now zooming out, looking at this from afar, it's it's starting to really take shape. This piece is starting to look good. This video will be for all my haters, all two of you guys. Okay, that's looking really good. Now here's the thing. I think the top of the head, I've kind of made it a bit small. And when you're drawing a character who's like supposed to be semi-realistic, you gotta think about the top of the head. Look how round it is. For those of you who don't know, this is the skull of my enemy. The top of the skull is really round. When you're looking at a person from the front, here's about where the hairline is. And on top of that, there's even more curvature. There's more of an egg on top. So you gotta remember to give your character a brain. Okay, there we go. Filling out the silhouette there a little bit. Just doing my plebeian activities. Okay, rotation, flip horizontal. That's pretty good. It might be... Ooh. Actually, that might be a bit too big. I drew it on the original layer. You know what? I'll leave it for now. And if it really is an issue, we'll do it at the end. So here I'm gonna apply some rim light to the side of the hair because the light is coming from the back. And some of that light is gonna shine through the hair and create this really bright edge. Now let's add in a bit of ambient lighting. So there's a bit of ambient blue light coming from the uh, left side of her, just like that. You can see very subtle. And these tiny small touches make the biggest difference. So no matter how small you are, remember you can make a difference. It's not about the size of the boat. It's about the motion of the ocean. Let's get some of that light on the ear too. And then let's get, let's get some shadow in the ear. This feels like a much more painterly process where I'm kind of just layering things on top and making small adjustments all the time. And I can see that the chin is a bit crooked. We're gonna flip this canvas around and yeah, it is, it's crooked. <laughs> it's crooked. Ugh. I think this video is just a reminder of how valuable these digital tools are. The ability to undo, to liquefy, to erase and without leaving a mark. You don't appreciate what you have until it's gone. Just like how you didn't appreciate your ex. And now they're gone. Oh my goodness. Look at that guys. This is looking really good. Okay, what do you guys think? Should we give her a background? Honestly, maybe we should. Let's try giving her a background. And if it doesn't turn out well through the magic of editing, we'll take this whole section out. Not bad. Let's make it nice and dark. All right, that is a good looking background. You know what? So we're gonna apply Gaussian blur to this background so that you can't see it too well. This is the one trick. You wanna get real fancy with running away from your responsibilities. You can even add some particle effects, you know, make it look like oh, there's so much going on. All right guys, so the big picture here is looking really good. I would say we're about 80% done with the painting. All we gotta do now is apply the final details. I almost clicked undo again, but I caught myself. For this piece, honestly guys, I'm not making too many mistakes. And to put a timestamp on this, I think we're about 40 minutes in, and this is what we have. Honestly, the most challenging part about this painting is to get that facial expression reading correctly. And I think it's there right now, but it's not as strong as I want it to be. I could just bring the corner of this mouth up, and you know, if I were to liquefy that, it would take a couple of seconds. But since we can't do that, it might take a little bit longer might be a little bit more tedious. It's funny how much I've changed from the last time I did a similar video because back then, the thing that I couldn't live without was undo. Man, three strokes in and I'm already <laughs> going for the undo button. Now it's a liquefy. I'm gonna get some of the sunlight coming through the hair. Look at that. Okay, and now moving on to a bit more shading, we're gonna get some darker hues of blue on the hair. Now I'm using blue on the part of her hair that's in shadow because her hair is white and white is known to reflect all the ambient colors in the environment. And what is the most prominent ambient color in an outdoors environment? It's not green, it's blue, blue from the sky. So when you're drawing a character outdoors, you have to keep in mind the way the blue interacts with the colors on their body. Okay, now I'm coming in here and doing some final touches. That's the best I can do. Now let's flip it back horizontally. Let's soften the lips a bit, make them look more 
you know the word. Juicy lips. Okay, so now taking a step back, looking at this piece, I think overall it's actually pretty good. But I think it's lacking a little bit of that final soft shadow that you're going to see in a lighting scenario like this. Let's see, since the hair is in front of the face, it's going to cover a bit of that ambient lighting reaching the face. And the shadow should be soft. So we're going to blend that out. And possibly more on the neck so that it separates the neck from the face a bit more. Okay, I think we're almost done. We're about an hour into this portrait. And I'm just gonna add some final ambient lighting touches. Some hints of blue on the skin. Not the best, but you know what? I'm pretty happy with how this looks considering that we cannot use undo, liquify, or the eraser. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take some time, maybe like 10 minutes, just to actually go in with a liquify tool and make some final edits to see what I can actually do with these tools at my disposal for the last 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead with that and check back in with you guys with the final piece. And we'll do a comparison between that and the piece that we have right now. All right, guys, so after another 10 minutes where I had all of my tools at my disposal, this was the original, the one we did without undo, without liquify, and without the eraser. And here is a new version. You can see there's not too many big differences, but having liquify, having the eraser, and having undo allowed me to do a lot more experimentation with my detailing. And I think the results kind of speak for itself. I've tilted the body a bit in the other direction with my liquify tool because I didn't want the head to be kind of tilting in the same direction as the body. I wanted there to be a little bit more of a contrast, a little bit more dynamicness. I don't know if that's a word. But now there's more expressiveness in the character's face. There's more lighting. There's more detail that I've added in to the hair, more textures. And that makes it overall a much better piece. So there we go. There's another art challenge for us digital artists. No undo, no eraser, and no liquify. Basically nothing. And I really do think that here we made the most of this challenge. And I'm pretty happy with the results. So for all the haters who were like, you can still use the eraser. Well, now we can't. And we still drew a beautiful portrait take that. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed watching this process. Hopefully this was entertaining and hopefully you learned something new. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this and go to my Patreon for monthly tutorials and I'll see you guys on the next video. Oh. Ah. And here I thought this would be a challenge. That was too easy. What happened? What's going on? I vividly remember the last time I did this challenge, which was probably over a year ago now, I was actually having a hard time with not being able to use undo. But in this one, it was kind of like a breeze. It was mostly just telling myself not to do it out of muscle memory. But like for the most part, it was, I was kind of cruising. I guess that's what a whole year of practice does for you. You just, things just get easier. That would make sense. Yeah. So if you're still here and you need a sign to keep drawing, keep practicing so that you can get better, this is your sign. This was not even a challenge. It's because I was consistent and you too can be like this.